This is where the rubber meets the road though. This is what we call revenue per guest. And this, the second list, now we've changed the names to protect the innocent. The second column here, RPG, revenue per guest, is the most important retail management tool I believe in the history of retail, and once you become familiar with that number, I think you'll agree. But let me move on here. Most of us, all of us, know what our dollar volume is, we know how many sales we made, so we know what our average sale is. What we don't have, accurately in most cases, is how many opportunities we have. So that's what we bring to the equation. And then with that, on the very far side, you'll see the actual conversion ratio for each store. So take a look at Houston here. Houston's got a, a very low revenue per guest. Their conversion ratio is 7.29%. So what revenue per guest is, is you can calculate it one of two ways. You can take your total dollar volume and divide it by your number of opportunities. So 42,800 divided by 617 is $69 per opportunity. So what that number is, is the dollar value of each opportunity if they purchased or not. So when you're comparing one store to another, it, it levels out the playing field. So if you've got one really large store, 10,000 opportunities a month, compared to another store that might have 500 opportunities a month, this number allows you to measure and compare the two. The second way you can calculate it is you multiply your average sale, 952, by your conversion ratio or closing ratio, comes up with the same number. Now, if you take a look at Youngstown, right in the middle there, that's, that's where I went to college, so I pick on Youngstown a lot, but Youngstown has the lowest revenue per guest number in the chain, $54 per opportunity. Well, why is it so much lower? You see at the very bottom, the average revenue per guest is $136 company-wide. So Youngstown is really far off. Why is that? Well, if you look at the far side, you'll see their conversion ratio is 4.87%, less than one out of 20. Really bad, these are real numbers. So the most astounding feature with Youngstown is if you look at the actual number of opportunities, they're getting more traffic than anyone else in the entire organization. They're getting two and a half times more traffic. So the bottom line is, well the owner never really worried about Youngstown because they were always in the middle of the pack. Their, their sales volume was always right at the average. Their average is 71,000 per store. They're at 68 in this example for this one week. But the question becomes, if I'm successful at getting Youngstown from the $54 that they're at up to the average, and assuming the traffic stays about the same, what does that represent for me? So if you do the math, that is a $104,000 increase in sales for that one week. This company is losing millions of dollars because they weren't measuring their customer traffic. It allows a manager, or especially an, an upper level manager or owner, to identify which stores in my chain are below average. I like to call it the reverse Pareto principle, the 80-20, but if you focus on the bottom 20% in your company with this kind of analytics, you really don't have to focus on anything else. Everybody will get the picture. But the beautiful thing is, if I'm able to get Youngstown and Houston and any below average store, it's benchmark, so if it's red, it's below average, green, it's above average. But if I'm able to get those below average stores up to the average, the beautiful thing is the overall average increases, so it creates perpetual improvement. But it makes it really easy for an upper level manager to identify where the problems are. It won't tell you what the problems are, but it'll tell you you've got an issue there. It's either people or staffing or training. Something's wrong. Thank you for your time. Hope to talk with you soon.